Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Elizabeth, who awakens in the middle of a car ride through the mountains, after dreaming about a man who took her into their secret world. Dr. Henry Kellenberg, her new husband, is behind the wheel. When they arrive at his house, he introduces her to his servant Claire Stratton and his blind son Oliver. In the evening, they spend their first night as a married couple. The next morning, Henry takes her on a tour of the mansion, which has dozens of rooms. These rooms each have a unique lock that can only be unlocked by scanning your thumb. They're all programmed to recognize both Elizabeth and Henry. There is one room she isn't allowed to enter, and Henry makes her promise not to go there. Later, Henry informs her that he must leave first thing in the morning due to work duties. Claire approaches Elizabeth the next day to inquire about lunch. She takes advantage of the opportunity to inquire about Henry, because she has seen his Nobel Prize, and now wonders why such a brilliant man would marry a simple woman like her. Claire simply says, I don't know, before leaving. When night falls, Elizabeth notices Claire and Oliver leaving the house in the middle of the night. She goes to see what's inside the forbidden room. The woman discovers a lab with a collection of strange machines. When she opens one of these devices, she discovers a sleeping body that looks exactly like her. Elizabeth panics and flees the room, colliding with a tray, causing a cut on her finger. She tries to call after putting a bandage on the cut, but the line is dead. She eventually falls asleep and doesn't awaken until noon. The next day Elizabeth mentions that there is no signal. Henry responds that it's very common in this area. When he asks about the finger, she says it was an accident. Later that night, Henry gets out of bed, and Elizabeth follows him. She barely gets to the stairs, when Henry discovers her and says that she will be punished for disobeying him. Then he pulls out a machete and starts chasing her around the house. Elizabeth tries to escape, but the locks no longer accept her thumb. She hides in the wine cellar, which Henry enters, then exits when he doesn't see her, going to the living room to wait. When Elizabeth finally emerges, the living room is empty. She grabs a fire poker and attempts to go upstairs, but Henry is hidden behind them. He grabs her ankle to make her slip, then comes out the machete. Claire and Oliver assist him in burying the body in the woods the next morning, and the three have breakfast together as equals. Claire begs Henry to stop before he gets caught, but he refuses. In the afternoon, he is visited by his detective friend Frank Logan. After telling Henry that Elizabeth is sleeping, Henry asks Frank what's bothering him. Frank admits that his department is being investigated for accepting payoffs. Frank was spared, but some of his friends were not, and he will be forced to testify against them. Henry's only response is that it's better to torture than to be tortured, which Frank finds extremely ruthless. Claire is writing in her journal, when she is interrupted by Oliver, who has brought her flowers. Claire declines and tells him to stop bringing her gifts. Six weeks later, in the middle of a car ride through the mountains, Elizabeth awakens from a dream where she meets a brilliant man who takes her into their own secret world. Her wedding gown is different, but the routine is the same, Henry introduces her to the family, shows her around the house, while Claire watches from afar, makes her promise not to go into the forbidden room, and they spend their first married night together after dinner and dancing. Before they both fall asleep, Henry says that he has to leave for work-related reasons. On the other hand, Elizabeth can't sleep and goes to the kitchen, where she finds Claire smoking. She tells her she wants to know more about Claire, but just as Claire is about to tell her something, Henry comes in and takes her back to bed. Elizabeth wakes up alone in the house the next morning. She finally gives in and enters the forbidden room after wandering around for a while. She discovers a replication of herself in the machine. She flees, but the capsule opens, and the other Elizabeth emerges and pursues her. After checking through the window that Claire and Oliver are no longer here, the copy touches Elizabeth's face and pulls up her pajama top. Elizabeth wakes up again at noon the next day, with her clothes pulled. She goes to the bathroom, and Henry pursues her. He enters and grabs a towel. Elizabeth tries to flee. Still, Henry quickly knocks her down and begins choking her with a towel. She manages to kick him off before running again, only to discover that the exit door is locked. Elizabeth rushes to the kitchen to get some knives, while Henry pours something on a piece of cloth. Following that, Henry goes to the living room to play the piano, and then leaves a recording playing, to fool Elizabeth into thinking it's still him. The plan works, she emerges from her kitchen hiding spot, and Henry appears behind her, pressing the cloth against her nose and mouth. Elizabeth fights him until she falls asleep, but she quickly opens her eyes and stabs Henry. Both fall to the floor, and as Henry bleeds out, the chemical takes effect, and Elizabeth falls asleep. When she wakes up hours later, she drags Henry's body to the door and tries to open the lock with his fingers, but it doesn't work. She then cleans the floor, hides Henry's body with his jacket, takes a shower, 
removes her wedding ring, and burns her bloody pajamas. Later, she's napping on the couch, when she's startled awake by a ringing phone, it's Henry's phone, which has a long list of missed calls from Claire. Elizabeth dials 911 and reports that she is trapped inside his house, and doesn't know the address. Unfortunately, Claire and Oliver return before Elizabeth can give them any more information, so Elizabeth hangs up. They are surprised to see her there, and even more surprised to hear her say Henry is sleeping upstairs. Claire gets extremely nervous as a result, and she barely makes it into the kitchen, and has a heart attack. She calls 911 with her phone before collapsing, and an ambulance arrives soon after. Elizabeth wants to take advantage of the opportunity to leave. Still, Oliver stops her, telling her that if she does, he will be unable to protect her from the police. He knows Henry is dead and believes she killed Henry in self-defense. They take the dead body to the incinerator together, where Oliver questions Elizabeth about her past. She was hospitalized frequently as a child, her parents died in a car accident, and she was raised in an orphanage. Oliver tells her those memories occurred in the other house nearby, where he and Claire sleep, she lived there until she was eight. While Claire would be better at explaining this, because she was a part of the experiment, Oliver still tries, telling her she's been cooked like an egg in the forbidden room. Six identical genetic copies were created, and she is the fifth harvest of Elizabeth. When they see Frank's car approaching, Oliver quickly gives her some information to deal with it. She greets Frank in the living room, explaining that Henry is napping because he is ill. While Oliver gets them some water, Frank asks her if she's okay, because he heard about her 911 call. Oliver returns and tells him it was Claire who called when she had the heart attack. As Oliver leaves the room to get something else, Frank remarks on how odd it is that everyone in this house has a problem, Elizabeth with her sleep disorder, Claire with her weak heart, and Oliver is blind. Shortly after, Oliver returns and kills Frank with a rifle. He tells Elizabeth that Henry has been repaying Frank since he kidnapped another Elizabeth, and brought her home three years ago. Henry also murdered Elizabeth, as he has done with every clone up to the present day. Elizabeth was returned to the tank after she turned eight, which is why she has a memory gap. She would only be brought out for physical therapy to fill her mind with memories and events, and to help her personality develop. Elizabeth helps Oliver to move the body to the incinerator. After that, Oliver instructs her to retrieve a bag containing clothing and money from the safe, for Elizabeth to flee. Before she can leave, he asks her to read Claire's journal, because he can't and needs some important information, then locks Elizabeth up until the reading is completed. Since she has no other choice, she reads the journal to learn how it all began. Everyone was aware of Henry's advances in cell research, and he retired as a billionaire, patenting several critical cellular processes. He unexpectedly invited Claire to his home five years ago. He was aware of her work in neurodegeneration, and desired her services. He led her to the forbidden room, and showed her the clones he created of his wife, Elizabeth, who died while giving birth to Oliver, who had a rare strain of Werner syndrome. Henry took her DNA and cloned her, creating six identical copies. The first two had complications at birth and died quickly, so he decided to place the other four in cryogenic sleep until someone discovered a cure. That was Claire's job, she initially refused due to ethical concerns, but Henry quickly persuaded her when he explained the unique scientific opportunity she would have. Claire cracked the code two years later, and they began working on implanting memories into the clone's mind. The third Elizabeth awoke physically healthy, but disoriented and unable to remember things for long periods. When Elizabeth discovered the harvest room and fled, Frank tracked her down. He drove her back to the house, where they pretended she was Claire's mentally ill niece. Still, Frank had to submit a report, so Henry paid him to keep everything hidden. Oliver interrupts her reading when he comes over to bring her some food. He apologizes for locking her up, but assures her that they are on the same side. As soon as he opens the door, Elizabeth jumps on him and asks for the door code, tying him up with his belt so he can't escape. She attempts the code on the door, but Oliver has been lying, and by the time she returns to check on him, he has already escaped. Elizabeth goes to the harvest room after stopping by the kitchen to get a knife, where she finds Oliver performing the final clone physical therapy to keep her alive. He swears he'll let her go once she finishes reading the journal. Still, when she approaches the clone, she puts her to sleep giving her an injection. Elizabeth awakens in her room, chained to the furniture, with some food left by Oliver, after dreaming about what she and the other clones went through. Attempting to remove the chain is futile, so she returns to reading the journal. After Frank was paid off, Henry and Claire continued their tests. Still, the third Elizabeth died of suffocation a few days later. Claire didn't believe Henry when he said he found her face down on the pillows, and she continued to ask no questions. They buried her in the woods after discovering her condition had returned, returning to do more research. 
After six months of exhausting every possible combination, Claire finally went for it and spent the night with Henry, just as he lost hope. After they finished, Henry stated that he wanted to turn off the machines, because they weren't working, but Claire disagreed. In the present, Oliver brings more food and proposes an information exchange with her. She claims Claire never mentions him, and that she began an affair with Henry after failing to crack the code, but Oliver corrects her, she never failed, Henry corrupted the samples. In response, Oliver informs her that she has been cured and that all the clones live there at the age of eight, while he was away at boarding school. He returned when he was 12 years old, and met the second child Elizabeth, whom he thought was the most beautiful, because he wasn't blind then. They quickly became friends, but Henry couldn't stand it, and jealously attacked Oliver in his sleep, and blinded him. He leaves the room after mentioning how much he dislikes seeing Henry and Elizabeth together, and Elizabeth returns to reading her journal. Claire ended the affair because she realized she could never replace Elizabeth, whom Henry couldn't get enough of. When she asked him what he really wanted, he said he wanted to relive his wedding night to feel the euphoria again. Claire didn't want to help at first, but because she couldn't bring herself to leave, she ended up assisting in bringing Elizabeth Four to life. While working on her body, she mentioned how she couldn't find any records of Elizabeth giving birth, and implied Oliver was a clone of Henry. Henry replies that he was always afraid Elizabeth would want the young guy she fell in love with, not this older version. Elizabeth is too upset by this news to continue reading the journal. Oliver wakes her up two days later with scissors on her neck and a bleeding hand, refusing to explain where he had gone. Elizabeth then tells him what he wants to know, Claire thought he was a clone, but Henry showed her the birth certificate, and made her call a doctor, so Oliver is Henry's son, and he can now be whoever he wants to be. Oliver gets off her, unsure how to deal with these facts, but Elizabeth guesses he loves her. Hence, she persuades him to come closer, promising they can be together now. She pushes him away, takes the scissors and key for the chain, and asks for the real door code as soon as he approaches her. When she starts kicking him furiously, she is abruptly interrupted by the sixth and final Elizabeth clone, who is wearing a wedding gown and calls Oliver, Henry. Elizabeth five tries to convince her that Oliver is the bad guy. Still, six believes him and forces her to drop to the floor, allowing her to recover the scissors and stab Oliver's leg with them. Then she takes Oliver hostage, but this is insufficient to deter Elizabeth six, who shoots the rifle, killing Oliver and injuring her previous clone. Elizabeth five rushes out of the room using the correct code to open the door. Still, as soon as she steps outside, Elizabeth Six appears and shoots her again. Before dying, Five instructs her to read Claire's diary to discover the truth. Elizabeth Six reads the journal while eating breakfast, after washing and changing her clothes. Claire heard Elizabeth Four scream, and went to see what was going on the night Henry killed her with the machete. Instead of explaining, Henry told her that he'd redone her contract, and changed the names on all his assets, so that they now belong to Claire, allowing her to continue her research. Claire threatened to call the cops, but Henry pointed out that no one would believe her, because Elizabeth had already been declared dead to the rest of the world. She had given herself in marriage to Henry, and then she died. Now she has given him joy outside the reach of the law, by allowing him to kill her repeatedly. He felt no remorse, because these replicas never felt like the real Elizabeth. Claire requested that he stop, and Henry promised to do his best. In the present, Claire returns from the hospital, and runs into Elizabeth at the door, carrying a packed bag. She hands Claire the journal, and tells her that she earned the house and the money. Then, finally free, she walks away. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.